the chocolatiers, the Bay Area has just so many oh, yeah. fantastic chocolatiers. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Ghirardelli's been around forever, but uh, right. there's a number of them up there. And a new one that I just became aware of, but it's been around for a, w- a little while now, is uh, Cho. And it's a T-C-H-O. And Brad... Kinser, uh, with he's a chief chocolate maker there. Uh, are you called a Are you called a chocolatier, Brad? I am. Yeah, or a, a chocolate maker. Yeah. Yes, and so uh, you are uh, working there at Cho Chocolates, and uh, the reason why I wanted to have you on the show, Brad, was to talk. I I got an education. I got some schooling at the uh, food show <laughs> <laughs> last uh, last week, and learned about how chocolate is sourced. And it surprised me that most chocolate makers really don't know where the where the cacao beans come from. But you there at Cho have an intimate relationship with the people that are uh, making the beans, growing the beans. We do, yeah. You know, it's uh, the, the cocoa supply chain is amazingly complex. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a product that we all, as you guys are talking about, we all know and love sort of, or most of us do from, a, from an early age. But um, that was one of the things that really uh, threw me into the whole chocolate world was one day I, I was studying uh, botany, and I realized that I really didn't have a, an understanding of how chocolate was made. And, and I just sort of followed, uh, started learning more and more about the cocoa tree and where it's grown. And, you know, it just, just opened up this world of, uh, amazing learning. Um, and the cocoa is, it's, it's from South America. Um, but the majority of it is grown in West Africa. Oh. Um, and just, you know, that being the case, it just becomes this, you know, very lengthy, uh, supply chain that, um, it's, it's difficult to get to know your farmers. I mean, it's, they cocoa isn't, isn't grown in, uh, you know, in Napa Valley or even in, in the United States, right. really outside, of, outside of a small amount grown, uh, being able to be grown in Hawaii, but, um, yeah, the majority, the vast majority of it is grown in West Africa. So uh, when the uh, people importing the uh, coke, now what's, just for my own ignorance, uh, what's the difference between cocoa and cacao? Uh, cocoa and cacao are, are basically the same thing. It's okay. just uh, in, in English, people tend to call it cocoa and and. In, Spanish and most other languages, it's called cacao. Okay, good. I, so I wasn't off uh, <laughs> earlier. I just had no, that, <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a very good question. So uh, when when buyers of cocoa uh, look at the uh, at the shipping box or whatever, it just says, you know, how do how do they know? You know how you see on so many different forms of chocolate that it is fair trade. Uh, how yeah. can they verify that? Is there a yeah. verification? And process? And what does that mean exactly? Well, fair trade is a, uh, is, a is an organization. Uh, it's basically an or- it's a number of different organizations that um, that, cer- that certify um, different products, and you know, actually, they, they can do anything from um, you know cocoa to sugar to actually, um, there's there, you can actually buy fair trade soccer balls. Oh. Um, so it's it's this really vast world that um, is trying to basically create that. Um, that um, certified uh, connection that the co- that the, the money that is paid for the product actually, you know, a, a just amount um, reaches the the actual producers of the product. So, and so, so, so there are different certifiers. Fires, um, there's some in Europe. There's some in the U.S. But um, that's the that's the basic concept. Um, so yeah. manufacturers could choose to pay less. There are suppliers out there who would accept less, but what you're saying is everyone's agreeing if they're part of this uh, fair trade to pay what essentially what's fair. Yeah, and I, I think that's you know it, it's something that companies uh, you know they recognize that there's a that cu- the customers really are looking for traceability in in the products that they consume, um, and and so that's that's really. That's really the impetus for for them to go out and you know create these these systems whereby they can go and certify the the legitimacy of the of the supply chain and Brad, do you go? Does Cho go beyond fair trade? Like you actually, uh, <laughs> how does how does your supply work? Because it's an interesting yeah, well, story. Well, fair, fair trade is a is a is a great. Um, is, is, is a great uh, system, um, but it doesn't necessarily deliver the quality that, that a company like Cho is looking for. 
So for us to do that, um, instead of just, you know, sort of, you know, committing to buying a fair trade uh, certified product, we really get down to the farm level and work with the cocoa farmers. So we have a program called Cho Source, whereby, you know, the, 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 the idea is to, is to really make a connection with the cocoa farmers. Um, and it's a mutually beneficial relationship. Um, we actually get down to the farms. We um, one, one of the things that's really unique about what we're doing is we actually install little tiny chocolate laboratories oh. um, at, at at some of the cooperatives where these where these farmers are growing our cocoa, and we train the farmers how to make their own chocolate. Now that sounds really simple, but um, it's really uh, most people don't realize that most cocoa farmers have never tried their own chocolate. Um, and a lot of cocoa farmers have, have never tried chocolate at all, um, especially in places like West Africa. What's so, the purpose of uh, training them to do that, so that they have an appreciation for what they're growing? Absolutely. Um, it's, it's so that they have an appreciation for what they're growing, but also so that they can understand how what they're doing on the farm, on their own farms, directly influences the quality of the cocoa. And that, um, and that just opens up their world to become much better businessmen. Um, or women. Um, so when they can really make the, they can start connecting the dots about, oh, if I, you know, use this variety of cocoa that we're growing in this area and process it in this way, I can get a much higher price from these people in Europe, for instance, uh, the, this chocolate company in Europe that's buying the cocoa. Or this company in the U.S. really likes the cocoa processed in a different way, and so we can do this and um, and create that. And so they can create different quality levels. They can create different uh, more of a diversity in their product line and and um, to really meet the uh, the customer's needs. So it's a really valuable tool um, that's that's really been very successful for us. So. That's great. And, and much yeah. like uh, much like wine, <clears throat> chocolate or cocoa has really subtle uh, hints of this or that, right? Uh, flavors that you can. Uh, Based kind of on modify the, or something, depending on where it's grown or how it's grown. Right, because it has that whole, the woman used the term when I was at your chocolate stand, uh, mm-hmm. the terroir. Right. Uh-huh. Absolutely. And that's something, you know, one of the one of the, the frustrating but also exciting things about chocolate is that, you know, it's probably in terms of our understanding of of quality and and where flavors come from, it's probably 40 to 50 years behind wine. So we're just being being able to connect these dots of you know how how the different varietals or the genetics um, you know combined with the fermentation process that happens in cocoa and the drying and roasting how how all these things really create different flavors. So it's it's very exciting that they were kind of um, you know really based because of consumer demand for a higher quality product we're able to explore some of these realms. Uh, if there was no demand, it would be. It wouldn't really justify, you know, doing all this this kinds of work, right. but um, it's it, it's great because the customers are really looking for mm-hmm. a more unique uh, chocolate experience, and um, you know, cocoa actually has um, you know, over I think eight hundred flavor compounds. Oh wow! Um, wow! And, yeah, and <laughs> so so it's it, it's really one of the more complex um, food products that that we consume. Um, so it's it's on par with uh, with you know some of the, the best of coffee. Um, and it's actually, I, I believe I've read that it's um, almost uh, double the amount of um, of uh, flavor compounds that, that that are found in wine. And it's healthy so, for you too. And it's also it, it can be healthy for you. <laughs> it can be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clarify. If you're eating the right kind. Hey, Brad, quickly, because yeah. we are starting sure. to run out of time here. But I'm curious Absolutely. to know what about how your chocolate is made makes it different than other chocolates that we can buy. What's kind of special in about, about it? twenty seconds? In twenty seconds. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure thing. Well, I, I think it really comes down to our connectivity with the farmers um, and our just, you know, really intense focus on, you know, sort of teasing out different flavors in the in, in, in the spectrum of cocoa. Um, and just there's just a world of diversity in terms in cocoa flavor. And that's sort of what we're all about exploring. Well, Brad Kinzer with Cho Chocolates, thank you so much for being on the program. We appreciate the uh, insight. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me.